everyone, it's Laura Bray at Laura NYC on Instagram here for Flavors of New York at the iconic Charles Pan Fried Chicken with the one and only Chef Kui. How are we doing, family? We are actually at their newest location, which is gorgeous. It is um, on where? 125th Street between Morrisside and Amsterdam. Brand new. And when? So when did this location open? Actually, two months ago we just opened. It is. It looks that new. <laughs> no, in a good way. It's, it's beautiful. This is my baby. Uh, we tried three times before we did this right here, and it happens. It's been 13 months since we've been in the restaurant business. That's amazing. So we're here now. Tell me, first and foremost, how long you have been with Charles Pan Fried Chicken and your journey with them. Um, and then we can talk about like the overall history of why this place is so important to the community and the city. Well, uh, I've been with Charles since COVID. Uh, Chef Charles, excuse myself. Uh, Chef Charles has been an icon of mine since I was a kid. He used to work at Copeland's. And my mom used to save the money and used to go to Copeland's and eat the oxtails. I loved it. And I wanted to cook my own. So he inspired me to become a chef. I went to Columbia Art School. <laughs> I became a certified chef. I went back to school for my best degree in business. Um, years later, working in the restaurant business and had opportunity to work with Chef Charles during COVID because his restaurants closed down. Um, but this man, he started a while ago by himself. But I've been with Charles, uh, actually, in COVID hit. So, like, about three years now. Yes. That is an amazing journey on your own. That Congratulations on all those achievements. And Thank you. being able to work with one of your icons, who's, he's a, Chef Charles is an icon to so many uh, people, as you can see. <laughs> uh, so tell us more about, obviously, it's in the name, Pan Fried Chicken, but tell us about what you serve, um, Beyond Chicken and what are some of your favorites, customer favorites, all of that. All right, so right now we are a soul food restaurant, home of finest soul food, I should say world finest soul food, but we are a soul food restaurant. Uh, authenticity of Chef Charles, hands down. Uh, our chicken is made in cast iron pans. Um, when he was picking cotton, he used to come home with his mom and he used to cook chicken with her in a cast iron pan because that's all they had and they couldn't afford anything. All the siblings that he had, and he was in charge of catching the chicken, plucking the chicken, cooking the chicken. So that, we stay true to his authenticity when it comes to cooking his pan-fried chicken. But we are more than pan chicken. We have a lot more. I know the name is iconic, because that's what we specialize in, but our ribs is amazing. Uh, we actually braise our ribs for eight hours, and then we smoke it for another eight. So it's falling off the bone, it's delicious. Turkey wings is amazing. Action camera guy. <laughs> Alan loves a good turkey wing and he couldn't wait. He has already eaten it and it fell off the bone, like out of this world. Exactly, and um, we, we have, we're we all across the board. Um, I went to school for Colony Arts. I studied in, in, in this field. Uh, Mediterranean was in my first heart, so we actually do fish. Uh, our pan fried catfish is amazing. We do braised catfish. Um, we do even chickpeas for vegetarians out there. And speaking of vegetarians, all of our vegetables are vegan friendly. Oh wow, okay, that's amazing. So this is obviously a place known for its chicken and ribs and pulled pork and a lot of hearty meat options, but they make all of their sides vegan friendly because soul food is not just for meat eaters. It's definitely for vegans too. They deserve a little soul food. They do, lives. but they need to understand how vegan is the, es like the essence of soul food because we had farms. Uh, meat was an expensive part of, of purchasing, so therefore the collard greens, the cabbage, the string beans, like if you can grow it, they can cook it. So that's the essence of soul food, I want people to know that. And it's just seeded to perfection, just as delicious. Talk about, you know, Harlem and the neighborhood and how Chef um, Charles started and all that amazing story. Well, Chef Charles, you know, uh, he's 74 years old and he, he grew up picking. Yeah, you're, you're young, there we go. Uh, he grew up on a plantation picking cotton. And from there, he came to New York at the age of 17 to work with his brother in a restaurant business, and he loved it so much that he stayed in it. Uh, he started working at Copeland's, which was amazing for him, but he had the hall of Renaissance energy, which he wanted to do adult things, so he took the table. So he put the table outside on the street and started selling hot dogs. <laughs> hot dogs and chicken, right? Crazy, and, and, and people loved it. And then from the table, he had a truck, and from a truck, he had his brick and mortar, he had three restaurants. But this man's amazing because he was doing it by himself. Um, we have a whole team now, thank God. I don't know how he did it, but he would go shopping. He would cook the food, he would serve the food, he would clean up and go shopping again. Like, sleep was nothing for him. He never called out. So that, that hustle ambition that everybody talk about, he really has that. But if you love what you do, you're going to do it like you love it. 
It's so simple as that. And he loved what he does. And he's 74 years old, and he's still here. We have a chef that cooks, he's still here. You know what I mean? And I want everybody to know who this man is and the struggle that he's been through because right now, you know, we have Black Lives Matters and all that, but back then, he, they didn't have that. So the struggle that he went through to now, to see that he has a restaurant on 74th Street, 72nd Street. See that he has a restaurant on 72nd Street on the west side. He loves it. You know, 145th and Edgecombe, 111th Street, West Central Park, and now 125th Street. I think it's a pretty amazing story that, you know, Charles could see. But we gotta stop in there because I really want him to see his name in the lights in Vegas. I think that's why it's so important to tell these stories. You speak about Black Lives Matter and equality and inclusion and all these things that matter so much to society. Um, it's important to tell the story that it wasn't that long ago. Remember, we're not that far removed from it, and that's why the fight continues on to, you know, mm -hmm. remind people of things like that. Of the struggle, and yeah. not to stop him. He never gave an excuse. Yeah, he did what his heart desired, and his passion is in the food. He brings, gets joy out of watching someone eat his chicken. He is real. And he goes to the store now, he watches everybody, and he's interactive, he's there, he's on the chicken, he's on the soups, he's on the sauces, he's on his drinks. Like, this man is still moving, and inspiring me. At 74, the mobility that he has, and he's not stopping. I think this is his heartbeat, this is his revival. Absolutely. And then, it, like you say, he's from the South, but he moved to New York, and uh -huh. this is where it all happened for him, because this is a place like in New York where someone like Chef Charles could only only be in, where the hustle doesn't stop, where people just get it. And he just knew he belonged here, like so many of us, mm -hmm. that this was the place that he came. And I'm so glad that he did, and I'm glad that you're here. And yeah, I hope, you know, sky's the limit for him, like I said, if he wants to go to Vegas and see his name in lights, well, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to feed you. Honestly, we have some great food for you to try. Of course, we have the amazing, world famous pan fried chicken. We got the turkey wings as well. You have that there. You have the ribs. Uh, I want you to try the ribs. You have that. It's made with a homemade barbecue sauce. That's on it. You get a dry barbecue, or you get the, put the sauce on it. I see. Oh, you got that sauce, y'all. We can make it saucy for you. Right. If I you want it saucy. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us. It's about, been my pleasure. Thank you about um, your personal story with Charles and about Chef Charles's story. Um, I cannot wait to eat everything. So, um, yeah, thank you again. Thank you so much, Anna. Let's dig in. The iconic pan-fried chicken. Wow. Mm, mac and cheese. It's so cheesy and but also like that baked it has that baked kind of texture in the middle which is what you know you get in the south with like really good soul food. Wouldn't be soul food without yams. Tastes like Thanksgiving which is my favorite day. <laughs> Gotta have greens. It's not soul food without your greens. Those are so good. Wow. Oh my god. Cornbread. So good. Thank you.